Well, hello, friends. It's, it is so good again to see you this week. Thank you so much for joining me, Pastor Zach, for this week's children's sermon. I hope you are doing well. I hope that you are having some fun outside, maybe going to the pool, playing some sports, spending time just resting and relaxing, maybe reading a book that you enjoy. But right now, I am just grateful that we have this time together to hear what God is doing in this place, in the community around us. So as always, I want you to find that comfortable spot in your house or outside, wherever you want to sit and just hear God's word. And when you get there, let's take a deep breath in and a deep breath out together. Ready? One, two, three, in. Hold it and out. A reminder that God fills us with the breath of life so that we might continue to share in God's love for God's love for us and God's love for the community around us. So I have a question for you like I do most Thursdays. Do you have a welcome mat at your house? Or have you ever seen a welcome mat? Now, most likely, right, you probably have. I, I know we have one at my house that the welcome mat is always usually at the front door. And I think the reason we have welcome mats is because we want to share a positive greeting with the person who's coming. We want our home or office or wherever to be inviting. We want to make sure people know that they are that they are welcome, of course, but they that they are allowed to be there. I bring all this up because in about 3 verses that Jesus says, and I'm about to read them, he says welcome a lot. Let me read them to you. It comes from Matthew chapter 10. Jesus says, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. It's a little confusing. Jesus is mentioning about rewards and welcoming and what does all this stuff mean? Sometimes you need a bigger context of the story to understand. Jesus is talking about, he just comes off from saying to his disciples, those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. So Jesus is talking about that when we become disciples of him, when we follow Jesus we, we lose ourselves in the sense that we don't live for our own desires. We live for God and God's will. We live to share love and salvation and hope through God's word. But then also, too, there is a, there's a part of the scriptures that Jesus mentions here that we are to welcome. It's an action. A welcome is action. It's saying, yes, you belong here. Yes, I want you here. There's this openness to welcome. Right? We say, welcome to church. We sometimes say, you're welcome. That we've done something for somebody. You're welcome. We say welcome when we want people to know that they are included. We generally say in church, all are welcome. All people are 
able and are invited to be here in the sanctuary, to be here at the church, to experience God's amazing love, that all people are invited to, to be baptized, to share in Holy Communion, to receive blessing, to pray, and to sing. And that when we welcome people, we, we welcome folks in the name of Christ, right? Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Well, God is the one who sent Jesus. So when we welcome people, we welcome those who we may not even know. We welcome them as a child of God, as our brother and sister in the world. We welcome people because we don't know what they might have to offer us. Or simply put, we don't know their story. Why our paths are crossing. Because see, God is so abundant and so amazing that there is so much connectedness. That there's this spider web of welcome and love and invitation. That God sometimes brings people into our life that we have no clue why. But if we don't welcome folks... We will never know why. We will then be living for ourselves and not for God's will. And that's, my friends, is what welcome is. We have welcome mats at home to share this love and this, um, this in inclusivity, this connectedness. And it's also just a way to be nice. Sometimes that's what it is to follow Jesus, is just to be nice. You don't even need to say Jesus' name. But when the opportunity arises, then we can say, you know what, I welcome you in the name of Christ. Because Jesus is love, Jesus is hope, Jesus is peace. And when we welcome people into hope and peace and love, there is so much goodness that can happen. God will do what God will do when we open ourselves up to be changed, to follow him and to be and to walk in the way of Christ. That when Jesus says, follow me, that's Jesus welcoming us into this new life, into this new way of of walking in the world that we can that we have a new orientation we have a new outlook on what god is doing so friends i invite you this week to hold the door to say you're welcome to say welcome to wherever you might be to say welcome in the name of Christ. Because friends, God is doing something amazing. That in Christ you are loved and you are enough. That's the welcome we share. We share in Jesus' promise for us and for the whole world. That we are loved and we are enough. Let us pray. Hey God, thank you for welcoming us into your family. Help us to welcome others so that we might share in love and peace and hope. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, thank you again for joining me this week. I hope to see you Sunday. In the meantime, take good care, God bless, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.